a telehandler, or a carry deck crane. Both machines serve a similar purpose. Hi, I'm Logan Skeel, and this is another episode of Toy Talk, where we talk about the history of manufacturers and or their equipment replicated in miniature, either in die-cast metal, resin, or plastic, and occasionally in wood. Models are the best way to preserve the past equipment. Go on and smash the like button, because today I'm going to review a highly detailed model of a carry deck crane, and talk about the Manawak Company. Also, I've got a story on a carry deck crane recovery later on. What is a carry deck crane? It is a small four-wheeled crane with a 360 degree rotating hydraulic industrial crane boom housed in the center of the machine. The crane deck also houses an operator's cabin at one side of the boom. The area above the wheels is a flat deck designed for loading and moving heavy material around a job site. These cranes offer huge versatility, have very good maneuverability, and high power for their small size. Operator and ground personnel safety is very important. Therefore, the operator will need to be certified to be in compliance with OSHA rules governing operating cranes. After the product review, I will talk a little about the Shuttle Lift 5540 Carry Deck Crane. For now, let's go to the rock quarry and review the TWH Shuttle Lift Carry Deck Crane model. And here we go, guys. This is the Anthony Crane version of the Shuttle Lift 5540F Carry Deck Crane. This model is in 150th scale and it is made by Sword Models. It comes here with the 150th scale. The crane has working outriggers. As you can see, I've got them out. It actually has steerable wheels. It comes with this boom section that mounts on the end. And it comes with a bag with little parts in it, which are some cover plates for pieces on the deck. They really did a really nice job making this model. The crane boom goes up just like it's supposed to, like a real one. It will extend, but you gotta be careful when you extend it to make sure you reel out the cable as you extend it, you see? That way you don't snap the line. The string is just, it's just thread, so it can be broken easily. It comes out in s multiple sections, right there. The crane also pivots. You can see how the crane body pivots, pretty nice. There's the string, you can see the string. Now the cab is fixed to the body and the door does open showing off the detailed interior. Underneath, you can see the bottom of the detailed transmission, the engine parts, differentials for front and rear axles. There's the exhaust and the muffler. This would be your fuel tank. This here is actually the operator's compartment. You can see those uh, pieces for the landing gear just push in and out to stabilize it. It's really nice. It has working steering on both the front and rear axle, just like the real one, it steers that way. And I do believe the real ones allow actual crab steering as well. So they can turn in the same direction and the thing can kind of walk sideways. Not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure they can. Full detailed operator's panel inside, seat, steering wheel, pedals on the floor. They did a nice job. It's got all its warning labels. It's got windows, front, top, sides, back, and door. Now, the little door that's open there, that is actually the engine hood. So we'll flip it back up there and see if we can kind of see inside. It has the detailed engine top you can see right there. Really nice detail. You can also see how it's got a nice flat deck. And that's so that you can pick something up, set it on the deck, and drive around and put on the lot. Then reset your stabilizers, pick it up, and put it where it's supposed to be. 
these here are very versatile cranes. Now, you can see it has two open points there and there. Well, in here, in this package, there are some panels that cover them up. There's also extra clevises and hooks there. Then there's pins for the boom that goes on it. It has up here on the boom, you can see it has the angle that which the boom is at when it's raised up, an indicator. Doesn't exactly flop on its own, but it gives you the idea what degree your boom is at. Rotates. On the back here, it's got some striping to warning in blue for Anthony Crane. It's got the Anthony Crane logo and another Anthony Crane down on the door. Up top, you can see the hoist in there. There's also another little compartment here that came with the door. Now, in order to you be able to see and get these parts on and off, they did give you a nice little pick, which was nice. It really helps trying to open these panels up because they don't exactly cooperate that well. There you go. And you can see it's just a little compartment up front. Up on the boom, it says Anthony Crane. And on the front of the piece, which this is the front, it's got headlights and brake lights because you kind of can go either direction with these things. But based on the way the cabin is and where the seat is, this should be the front. Then there's mirrors here and here. Really nice. Anthony Crane and a hook there to either tow it or, you know, to tow something with it. Over on this side, we got warning labels at the stand where the stabilizers are, and then some other warning labels to take care of it. Hydraulic lines here, and then it's got some pins which hold everything together. There's lights right there so that you have work lights pointed at the boom. It also says 5550F carry deck on that side as well as on that side of the boom. Go around to the back. <laughs> it looks very much like the front. Brake lights and headlights. Anthony Crane logo, some warning things, and then other pieces. And there we go, folks. That is the shuttle lift 5550F carry deck crane in 150th scale made by Sword Models. And this one is painted up in delivery of Anthony Crane blue with white cab and Anthony Crane logos. 150th scale die cast model. Get one or any of the other carry deck cranes while they're still available at my website. The link is down below. A little about the shuttle lift 5540F by Manawak. Oh, wait a minute. I thought it was manufactured by Shuttle Lift Company. Well, I was correct. It was made by the Shuttle Lift Company. Shuttle Lift Automation Machinery Manufacturing, to be exact. The Manawak Company marketed one under their name. <laughs> Confusing? Well, not really. Manufacturing a product for another company to label it as if the other company had built the product happens frequently. For example, MTD makes most of the riding lawnmowers. They make for Cub Cadet, Troy Built, and other brands. The latest MTD makes for is DeWalt. In fact, MTD makes almost every brand of mower in America. Manawak Cranes began as a business venture by Charles West and Elias Gunnell. At the time, they headed the Manawak Dry Dock Company, now the Manawak Company, Inc. Charles West was wanting to diversify their business, so he found the Moore Speed Crane Company. Moore's Speed Crane Company was needing financial backing, so West decided to go on and help out. As part of the deal, Moore's Speed Crane Company patents were signed over to Manawak Company. Manawak was now in business as a leading crane producer, which they still are today. The history of the Shuttle Lift Company 
is quite limited. I was barely able to find anything at all on them. But I did learn that they were a major producer of gantry cranes. Shuttlelift has made their gantry cranes a popular product line through adaptable design and maximum maneuverability, superior engineering innovations, and customer-driven improvements have equipped the shuttle lift rubber-tired gantry crane as the preferred innovative lifting solution. Over the years, customers have challenged shuttle lift to solve their material handling solutions and shuttle lift has responded with answers that have proven both valuable and beneficial for their customers. Okay, story time. One dark night, a fairly new carry deck crane was loaded onto a flat bottomed barge. The idea was to transport the crane from a large island near the middle of the Great Salt Lake in Utah over to the mainland. Now, the Great Salt Lake is a shallow lake that has a flat bottom. The depth of the lake averaged between four and five feet at the time. Weather did not favor the transport. The weather over the lake could and did change fast. The wind came up and huge waves began crossing the lake. That didn't bode well for the barge and the crane. Halfway across the lake, the crew had to abandon ship just before the barge capsized, <laughs> dumping its load into the lake. The crane sank to the bottom of the lake to lay in the mud for 30 plus years. Today, the Great Salt Lake has partially dried up, exposing the sunk crane laying on its side. The authorities, they wanted it removed from the lake bed because the crane had become an attractive nuisance. A recovery team was employed to remove the crane at considerable risk. Crews spent two days recovering the crane. The first day was digging the crane out of the bottom, which was successful. Unfortunately, while dragging the crane to shore, a storm came up and the recovery had to be abandoned as the recovery truck was starting to get stuck. About a month later, the crew reassembled with more equipment this time and successfully recovered the crane out of the Great Salt Lake. I hope you enjoyed this video and my story about recovering a heavy carry deck crane. While limited supplies last, special order a carry deck crane model for your collection with the link down below. You can also go on and grab my report on scale with another link down below. Guys, I'd really appreciate it if you would leave a tip here or go on and sponsor me over on my Patreon page with the links below. A purchase, tip, or sponsorship really goes a long way to support this channel, bringing you more diecast model reviews and histories of the real machines. Thanks for watching. Please go on and smash that like button, share this video, and subscribe to my channel. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'll be back soon with some new content and another episode of Toy Talk.